Hey future nurses, it's Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. This is your exclusive sneak peek at our exit prep series, made to help you crush those tough HESI and ATI exams. We focus only on what really matters, so that you're ready for every test, including the NCLEX. Now let's dive into some med math and tackle some top tested questions that you'll see on these exams. Oh, and don't forget to check out our full nursing school membership, built to take the guesswork out of studying. Now let's dive into dosage calculation. Some nursing schools call it med math. So let's start with the med math memory tricks. First up is IV drip rates. On your exit exam, you gotta know these. So use the memory trick, TV makes you deaf over time. So before you start breaking down a question, remember, TV is total volume. DF, for being deaf, is that drip factor and you wanna know it's 15 drips per minute. And then put that over time here. The key number is 60 minutes. So that's why I made the memory trick, TV makes you deaf over time. Cause my mom always used to tell me, stop sitting so close to the TV, it's gonna make you deaf over time. Now let's review five example questions for drip rates. And you could see these on your exit exam. The HCP prescribes methylcillin three grams IV in 150 mLs of 0.9% normal saline to be infused over one hour for a client with pneumonia. Now the drip factor is 10 drops per mL. What is the drips per minute for this client? So anytime you see GTT, you're thinking drips. And we're always recording the answer as a whole number. Because remember, you can't give half of a drop here. So first off, focus on what you're calculating for. So in this problem, you are calculating GTTs per minute, basically drops per minute. So when calculating GTT per minute, your answer should always be recorded as a whole number. So this question obviously is asking for drops per minute. So let's set up the equation. So remember, TV makes you deaf over time. So TV is the total volume, DF is the drip factors there, and time is 60 minutes. Remember, 60 minutes and not one hour. One hour is for a pump. So we're gonna set it all up here. So we have 150 mLs for total volume, 10 is the GTT, and then over 60 for 60 minutes. Now, when we add up the numbers, we have 1500 over 60, right? Then we do simple division and it's 25. So the correct answer is 25 drips or drops <laughs> per minute. Now, question number two, the healthcare provider prescribes IV erythromycin, which is an antibiotic, 200 milligrams in 250 mLs of LR, that lactated ringers. It doesn't really matter what they're giving it for. So, okay, for food poisoning. Now, the drip factor is 15. What is the drips per minute for this client? So as you do, let's set up the formula here. TV makes it deaf over time. Then we're just simply plugging in our numbers, right? So 250 for total volume, 15 for the drips, and then over 60. Always remember, it's 60 minutes. So we're going to multiply the top row and divide. So when we multiply the top row, we get 3750 divided by 60. Now, our grand total is 62.5, but we have to round up because, remember, we can't give half of a drop, right? So the answer here is 63 drips or drops per minute. Now for question three, the HCP prescribes mefoxin one gram 50 mLs in normal saline to be infused over 45 minutes. Okay, the key term there is 45 minutes. And this client is scheduled for surgery. The drip factor is 20 GTTs per mL. So again, what are the drips per minute? So once again, we're setting up the formula. So TV makes you deaf over time. But the big thing here is the time, right? Instead of 60 minutes, it's 45 minutes. So simply plug in our numbers here. So 50 is the total volume, 20 is the drip factors over 45. So multiply the top row, we get 1,000 over 45, and so we divide. Now we have 22.2. But again, we can't give 0.2 of a drop, so we round down. So the correct answer is 22 drips per minute. Looking for more tips and strategies for questions like the ones we just covered? Well, our Simple Nursing membership includes exit prep lectures 
and thousands of questions across all nursing school and NCLEX topics. Question number four, the healthcare provider prescribes 1,200 mLs of normal saline to infuse over six hours. Okay, so that is a big key term. Six hours is not 60 minutes, right? What is the drips per minute for the client? Okay, so set up your formula as usual. TV makes you deaf over time, right? So let's plug in the numbers. We know the total volume, that's 1,200. The drips are easy because that's 15, but listen close right here. The time is six hours. So we do 60 minutes times the six because we're six hours, right? So now we can multiply across both top and bottom. So we get the numbers 18,000 over 360. Then we simply divide and we get 50, and that's a round number, so the answer is 15 drips per minute. Now moving on to question five, the healthcare provider prescribes normal saline with 20 microequivalents of KCL, that potassium, right? To infuse at 100 mLs per hour for a client with low potassium, that hypokalemia. Now the drip factor is 10, so what is the drips per minute for this client? All right, so let's set up our equation here. So total volume times DF over time. So TV makes you deaf over time, right? Now let's plug in our numbers. Our total volume is 100 mLs times 10 drips per minute over 60. Remember, it's always one hour is 60 minutes. So multiply across and then divide. So when we multiply across, we have 1,000 over 60 and simply divide. So we get the number 16.6, and obviously we're gonna round up because we can't give a portion of a drop. So the answer here is 17 drips per minute. Okay, now let's review the formula method for dosage calculations, also called MedMath. Use the memory trick D over H times quantity. I just call it drinks are on the house times the quantity. So D is for the desired dose or doctor's order over what you have on hand times the quantity. You have to know this for your exit exam. So remember, drinks are on the house times the quantity. So right now, let's go over some practice questions that you could see on your exit exam. Okay, let's break down question one. The healthcare provider HCP prescribes oxycodone 7.5 milligrams PO for a client with a cancer diagnosis. The medication on hand is five milligrams per tablet. How many tablets does the nurse administer to the client? Calculate the dose and record your answer. All right, so let's break this down. First, identify what you're solving for based on the question provided. In this question, you're calculating how many tablets or tabs the client should receive to achieve the prescribed medication dose. Next is to set up the equation, desired over have, or basically the formula method. So remember, D over H times Q. So drinks on the house, times the quantity. So what is the desired prescribed dose here for the D? Well, the doctor ordered 7.5 milligrams. And what is the dose you have on hand, the H? Well, H is five milligrams per tablet. And is the H in the same unit of measurement as the D? So yes, now we're moving on here. Now for the Q, what is the quantity here? So Q for the H is one tablet. So the formula looks like this here, 7.5 over five times one tablet. So we have 1.5. The correct answer is 1.5 tablets per dose. All right, question number two here. The healthcare provider prescribes low pressure for a client with hypertension. The medication prescription or order is 25 milligrams PO and the dose on hand is 50 milligrams per tablet. So how many tablets does the nurse administer to the client? Okay, let's break it down here. First, identify what you're solving for based on the question. In this question, you are calculating how many tablets or tabs per dose the client should receive to get the prescribed medication dose here. Next is to set up the equation, the formula method. So D over H times the Q, the quantity. So once again, what is the desired prescribed dose here, or basically the doctor's order? So D is 25. What do you have on hand? Well, we have 50 milligrams for a tablet, and 
The D and the H match because they're both milligrams. So let's move on. Now, what is the quantity? So the Q is one tablet. So we have 25 over 50 times one, and that is 0 0.5. So we basically give 0 0.5 tablets per dose. Now for question three, the healthcare provider prescribes 50 micrograms here, PO levothyroxine, for a client with hypothyroidism. The dose on hand is 25 micrograms per tablet. How many tablets does the nurse administer to the client? All right, let's break it down here. First, identify what you're solving for in the question. So in this question, how many tablets or tabs should the client receive here? Next, we're going to be setting up the formula method, desire over have. So D over H times the Q. Remember, drinks are in the house times the quantity. So what is the desired prescribed dose? Or just think D is the doctor's orders here. So D is 50 micrograms. Now, what is the medication dosage you have on H on hand? Well, H is 25 micrograms per tablet. Now, just remember, the D and the H have to match microgram and microgram. So they match. Now let's move on. Now the quantity, how much are we giving here? So we're giving one tablet. So setting it up, it looks like D is 50 over 25 times one tablet. And then we determine our correct answer here. So after doing the math, the correct answer is two tablets per dose. Get a full breakdown of what you need to pass the NCLEX with our NCLEX Review Lecture Series and live cram sessions led by myself and industry experts. All right, question number four. The healthcare provider prescribes 20 milligrams of propanolol, that beta blocker, for a client with hypertension. The dose on hand is 20 milligrams per tablet. Now, how many tablets does the nurse administer? So once again, let's break it down. We're identifying what we're solving for. So we're solving for how many tablets or tabs we're going to give to this client, right? So we're using the formula method here, D over H times the Q. So D for doctor's order or basically dose prescribed. H is for what we have on hand. So D is 20 milligrams. H is also 20 milligrams. That's pretty simple. And the Q is the quantity. So this is a really simple question. 20 over 20 times 1. So our correct answer here is 1 tablet per dose. Question number 5. The healthcare provider prescribes 40 microequivalents of KCL. So don't get scared. It's just a microequivalent. Just look at the big number here, 40. Now, this is prescribed PO for a client with hypokalemia, that low potassium. The dose on hand is 20 microequivalents. So how many tablets does the nurse administer to this client? So once again, let's break this down. First, identify what you're solving for. We're basically solving for how many tablets or tabs the client's going to receive. So we're setting up this formula method, desired over have. So remember, drinks are on the house times the quantity. D is for the dose or desired order prescribed here. H is for what you have on hand. So the D is 40. H is 20 here. And just remember, the D and the H have to match in terms of the units. So they're both microequivalents. So that's good. So 40 over 20 times the 1 for the quantity here. So after doing the math, the correct answer is we're going to give two tablets per dose. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides, packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.